All good. Okay, good afternoon. I'm uh, Lieutenant Robert Rock, R-O-C-K, with the Denver Police Traffic Investigations Unit. And we're here today to talk about a collision that occurred last night. Um, at approximately 8.30 p.m., a pedestrian was attempting to cross Park Avenue West at Tremont Place uh, when she was struck by a vehicle that was traveling outbound toward Broadway. After the collision, the vehicle continued to drive away from the scene without stopping. Uh, the pedestrian is a 66-year-old female. She was transported from the scene with uh, serious injuries in critical condition. Today, she remains in the intensive care unit at Denver Health Medical Center. The suspect vehicle that we are looking for is a 1998 Lincoln Town Car bearing Colorado license plate number QKI285. And that vehicle will have damage uh, to the front side passenger side quarter panel and also to the passenger side side view mirror. Immediately after the collision and determining that we had enough information, we issued a Medina alert and that, was, uh, that went out statewide. And we also issued a Denver auto body alert notifying all of the local auto body companies uh, to be on the lookout for this vehicle. And we would just ask that anyone with uh, information either about the collision or about the uh, vehicle or its whereabouts would call Crime Stoppers at 720-913-STOP. And there's also a text option that you have if uh, you want to refer over to the Crime Alert Bulletin that we've sent out to everyone. At this time, I would like to uh, have uh, Nick, who is a volunteer in policing with the Denver Police Department, uh, display for you the uh, side view mirror piece that we recovered from the scene so that you can get the exact color of the vehicle that we're looking for. At this time, I would like to entertain any questions that you might have. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there were some cameras that were on set of street poles there. Were those recording and are using that information to help us? We are currently looking into that. Um, we have some very good witnesses that saw all of this, verified the license plate number uh, with the piece of the vehicle. We feel very confident that we're zeroing in on the correct vehicle, but we will be looking for all, all video that will help us understand how the collision occurred. Who was it that was able to give you a description of that car? I'm sorry? Um, one of the witnesses at the scene, I, uh, due to the ongoing investigation, I can't tell you who that was specifically at this time. Lieutenant, was, was she on the north or south side of the intersection? Uh, and, and so the car was traveling eastbound, you said, on Park Avenue, correct? Yes, yeah, it's, it's an angular street, right. so we, we kind of describe that as the outbound direction when you're traveling toward Colfax that's inbound. She is on the, um, on the eastern side of the street, crossing to the opposite side. Uh, we do not know. She uh, was unable to provide any information to us last night and has not been able to today as well. Yeah, well, can you tell us, I mean, I see you obviously very serious, can you tell us about the injuries that she sustained? Um, multiple blunt force trauma to uh, head and body. Do you know anything about whether there was one person in that car, just a driver, other passengers, anything else about it that helped people identify? Sure, our understanding is, is that the car had multiple people in it. Um, but beyond that, uh, we don't know any more information that, that we can share with you. We would like to hear from the folks that were in the car. Um, it is not uncommon that uh, uh, people who uh, attempt to hide information about an, an incident that they know about could potentially get charged. And so we would encourage those passengers in that vehicle to come forward and tell us what they know before it gets more serious for them. I know you haven't released, but did the, the witnesses identify whether it might have been a male or female silhouette driving any, any you know, they didn't see their face or something? Yeah, at this time we don't have uh, good information on that. Obviously it was dark um, with the reflection off the windows and things like that. It's very difficult to tell one way or the other. Yeah, I know you said before that this had been on crashes and it's really difficult for family members in the future to come up with the fact that Yeah, the, uh, the tragedy in this situation is, is it doesn't appear that um, our victim has any family locally, and we have not been able to contact any family at this point in time. And so 
this is one of those situations where it appears that um, our victim uh, may have been a homeless person and so we're uh, uh, doing everything we can to contact her friends and family that we can identify but uh, yeah she's uh, suffering this alone at this point in time uh, as far as the serious ones, this is only the second one that's risen to the level of the Medina alert that we've had uh, this year. And um, as far as additional hit and runs, I don't have the exact number for you at this time, but they continue to happen. Can you describe the Medina alert, how that works? Yes. And why you guys do that? Sure. So several years ago, um, a young man by the last name of Medina was uh, struck and killed here in Denver. He was a valet who was parking cars. And we uh, were able to finally resolve that case by catching the suspect who was attempting to flee to uh, Mexico. And uh, that young man's family and uh, Larry Stevenson and some other people within the city began what, they, what we have termed the Medina Alert. We started it in Denver just as a policy where we will contact uh, all the news media immediately and, and it's broadcast on the police radios the type of vehicle we're looking for and a license plate and any descriptions that we have. Uh, then a couple of years ago it, it was uh, introduced as a bill in the state legislature and it was passed into law and now uh, that allows us to notify the state uh, Colorado Department of Transportation and they will put that information on the variable message boards that are on the highways throughout the state of Colorado. So what time did that info go out? Sorry, Sure. Um, it, it went out probably around 11 o'clock. I don't have the exact time, but I, I was notified of this incident at around 9.30, and uh, it was already in the works to get it uh, published as soon as possible. So uh, it went out. It, they typically run for about a 24-hour period, and then we can work with the state to extend that if necessary. Obviously, they have uh, traffic situations that they have to broadcast, and they may have other emergency things that they have to put on those boards so we uh, we have to be sensitive to uh, the needs of CDOT as well. Yeah, yeah, we caught some residents out there that said that, that there were pedestrians who said it's sometimes difficult to get across that intersection uh, because people going on Park Avenue are, are usually, and they said that they do see you guys working radar right there sometimes. I know you can't think of every intersection in town, but does that one ring a bell to anybody that, that there are crosswalks on four ways there and, uh, and they said you, we did observe people going very fast. Certainly. Um, again, it's uh, what, what we would describe as a complex intersection. You've got uh, multiple lanes of travel in uh, several directions and all that kind of approach. Uh, our traffic engineers, they do a, a tremendous job in analyzing each intersection, the distance required to cross it and how much time and installing the pedestrian signals and things. And you are correct. We do uh, do enforcement activities there. Uh, it's just we try to bring all of that together uh, along with our education uh, efforts through grants that we receive from CDOT. So it's, um, it's not an easy problem. That particular intersection, we haven't had uh, any uh, significant issues in a while. Can you describe what it was like last night? Were there multiple witnesses or did you just happen to have one or two that were able to give some pretty good info? There, there were more than two, I can tell you that, um, that, that were right around there and that did observe uh, what occurred. So that's about all I can really say about that. How crucial is timing right now? Is that person that the scene? Certainly. Uh, we think that uh, anytime we have an incident like this, we would like to see them resolved within a few days. In the past, uh, it's sometimes taken us a, a week or more to catch up with folks, but uh, timing is crucial. We have officers who are actively looking for this vehicle. and. With your help, we, we'll have people all over the state of Colorado that are helping us to find this vehicle. So, yeah, the sooner we can um, locate it and find out what happened, the better. Can you say why this rose to the level of the Well, we have a serious bodily injury to someone. We have uh, enough information uh, in the form of a license plate number, vehicle description, and those are the required elements for the Medina alert. So anytime there's serious bodily injury or fatality involved, that's when we can uh, authorize a Medina alert. Do you know about how fast this was 
Um, at this point in time, we don't have any estimates of, of the speed. But as you all know, and I've stood up here and told you before, when you have a car that's uh, two to 3,000 pounds and it hits a person, even at a slow speed, it can do a lot of damage. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm just going to have you uh, describe the color. All I see is dark color. I want to have, of your words, what color you would think it is and what kind of sedan are you looking for? Certainly. It, again, it is a, um, we believe it's a 1998 Lincoln Town car. Uh, it's going to have four doors. Um, it, th those cars have pretty long noses on the front end. And um, this particular color has been described as a metallic blue-gray. Um, at night, it certainly would look black uh, or even dark blue. It just kind of depends on how the light hits it. So if, if somebody sees a dark vehicle matching a similar description, older model town car, um, have them give us a call. If, if it's missing a passenger side mirror, then we're definitely interested in taking a look at it. Uh, we had one call this morning that turned out to not be the vehicle involved. Oh, certainly. I, I mean, we don't have their side of the story. We don't know what it was that they even uh, experienced. Um, we're pretty confident that they knew they hit someone. Uh, be, just based upon the damage and the uh, debris that we found at the scene, but uh, coming forward is always the best option. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.